my friends. Happy to see you here today. It's the end of the day and we're at Myohonji Temple again and I wanted to shoot our first uh, Negong uh, training video. So we'll be putting out uh, new types of training but I think it will be very similar to what you've already been learning in the Tao Foundation and the Inner Alchemy Meditation class. I think when we explore uh, this idea of Negong that we find within the internal martial arts, specifically we can think of as uh, Shingi, Tai Chi, and Bakwa. Okay? And uh, maybe perhaps when we really think about martial or a kind of combat art, people use the term Shingi Chuan, Bakwa Zhang, Tai Chi Chuan. So, Zhang means a palm, Bakwa, palm art. Xingyi Chuan, Tai Chi Chuan, Chuan means a fist art. But these are more, uh, perhaps we would think of these uh, as a system or an art. If we really trace the history of uh, these arts, we can directly trace them back to uh, Taoist practices of Daoyin and also the Nedan Shu. Nedan, inner elixir, we think of in English we say like internal alchemy meditation or the Taoist meditation practices. We call these usually Nedan. Dan means a elixir. Okay, so this if we start to little be more familiar Chinese terms such as Dan Tian, Dan, again we find this word Dan, elixir. Oftentimes a uh, very old term or more traditional term for Taoist practice, sometimes even they just say Lian Dan, Lian Dan, so to practice Dan or to train Dan. So this term Dan is a, or means a rarefied inner energy or an inner energy that we've cultivated over time and uh, purified. So all of these terms are really, we can think, uh, from a same school or from a similar uh, theoretical base. So this, uh, for example, we have the five elements, we have a yin-yang, and we also have the eight trigrams. So like a bakwa, this means uh, eight trigrams. So these are really uh, Taoist uh, philosophical theories or Taoist cosmology, we can think like this. And so those uh, theoretical and cosmological frameworks uh, form the basis when they organize these systems. So you'll learn more um, as we practice together and I am, I think I have some basis or basic knowledge in theory. I really more like to practice. <laughs> And so I really like to experience practice. Okay, and so we we will learn things um, in the beginning that maybe you you would think of as a qigong. Um, this word negong is uh, I think really uh, has a different meaning or definition depending upon the teacher, or even depending upon a level of practice. And so I would like for you to not really think, for example. Uh, qigong is something different from negong. It's a different practice. It's all something same. And it's all something that just depends on the level of where you are. So for example, uh, qigong may be very, very traditional view of this term doesn't mean anything to do with movement. This means more actually like cultivating breath, breath training, and also training and working with mind and breath to try to develop chi energy internally. But now in the West, especially in Europe, um, in America, Canada, uh, Mexico, all of these uh, countries, South America, Argentina, Brazil, uh, this word qigong is very, very prevalent. And, uh, you know, people think of as uh, some uh, movement art. 
yeah, sometimes some different kind of, we see many, many kinds of uh, movement patterns, many, 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 I don't want to be silly, <laughs> do something silly when I demonstrate, many kinds of movement patterns. And uh, some are from the Taoist school, but really we can find Qigong from the Shaolin school, which is Buddhist. And many kinds of these movements people just uh, created uh, in a contemporary sense. Okay. And so we'll be exploring these in this class, and this is a little, little preparatory talk. Um, I've studied Xingyi, Tai Chi, and Bakwa, but uh, to be completely honest, I, from a very young age, fell in love with the Xingyi practice. And a lot of people um, think of Xingyi as a more martial or a more almost karate, karate-like in its uh, appearance, very stiff, I guess, or very uh, using a force. But uh, I learned a Xingyi system that was very soft, very, very, I think I would say it's very Taoist, very soft. And the Xingyi system that I learned uh, really combines elements of Bakwa within the footwork or within the way that we use the hands. So again, I like to look at truth. I like to try to get down to the very bare and simplistic understanding of these arts. And that was uh, what I wanted to begin with today. Now, uh, if we look at, uh, especially we can find in Bakwa and Xingyi, but we can also find in Tai Chi, this idea of four principal powers, okay, that, that, that at the very, very basis of any of these movements, we find four principal powers. And these powers are sometimes, or most commonly, uh, termed the power of rising or lifting, lifting power, raising power, rising power. We have the power which is called a spiraling power or often in Xingyi we call drilling. So like a screw, like a spiraling, a twisting power. Okay, so rising, drilling, we'll have an overturning or we can even use this term rotation. So just see, see how I'm rotating my forearm here? This is a rotation power, okay? And then a descending or a falling power. And so in a lot of basic training, especially in the arts of Xingyi and both Bakwa, and when we get in, the, the teachers who are trying to teach you to develop inner strength, Negong, inner power, they really emphasize uh, these four principal movements, but also these are energies, these are kinetic or a kind of a, a kinesiology, a type, very specific type of body movement, okay, also an energy, okay. And now, uh, this is uh, both in Xingyi and Bakwa, this is a very principal movement we're going to use today as a warm-up, okay. And we're going to take our hands first, and I want you first, let's just to practice grasping, okay? Now, you can't feel my body, but it's very important that we learn to unify our forearm, the mo movements within our forearm and our hand with our intercostal space and intercostal muscles. So different exercises we do, we're going to really try to train that, okay? Now, be sure you have a wide enough stance here, okay? And... Uh, this, if you look, if I kind of squat down here, this is my toe line and my knee line here. We've got uh, almost, I have two, two fist distances. Now, some very traditional teachers would say to use only one. Um, I'm, I'm a little flexible, so I take a wider stance. But make sure you're not uh, doing something like this. You really, we're training our, our leg strength here. Um, our, we're connecting the lower part of our body with the upper part of our body. And this is very important in this training. And so, so let's take a minute to really feel your stance here. Be aware of your sacral bone, bone and your lumbar. We slightly tuck the sacral bone. The knees are held above the top of the feet. We don't ever go do something where we're leaning back because this will damage the knees. And just feel, let's shift our weight. I want you to feel your weightedness here. 
For those of you that are, are advanced or have a lot of experience with internal martial arts, we're going to begin from the very beginning. Okay, we're not going to try to do something advanced here. So we're really beginning with our stance. Okay. Now, the important, if we look at yin and yang, the bottom part of our body is yin, upper part of our body is a yang. What this can mean here, in a very, very simplistic view, is that we allow more strength and heaviness to be experienced in the lower part of our body. And we have the upper part, we try to have more uh, relaxation, but not weakness. This is, this is ex expansion, absence of tension. Okay. Now, we'll take our hands here. When I was learning Xingyi, this was a, really a, one of our fundamental warm-ups. We're going to concentrate on your pinky here. We're going to squeeze and go through each finger. And then my thumb will lock behind my index finger. So you see how this knuckle kind of uh, pokes out. Okay, we're going to do that. And as we do that, I'm contracting my abdomen, tucking my sacral bone, and squeezing my intercostal muscles, closing the space between the ribs, the intercostal space. Okay, And I, I lower my body down. Okay, Then I come up. Like this, okay. Okay. Now, you, you can hear a sound. This is my tendon. I'm actually moving the tendons in my hand and arm. This is a kind of nagong skill. Over time, you, you can do different things with your bones or your tendons. And if I were to grab you, if we were able to, to have a physical contact, I can grab very, very, use a lot of strength um, with my hands here because... I can contract very quickly. I can contract my tendons. And this skill developed, I think, from all of this training, but really from this training here. And importance here, this is your yin musculature, the yin side of your arm. Your intercostals here, this is also the yin side of your arm. And so you're, you're learning to use this musculature here also, and that's a real hallmark of the... Uh, Taoist uh, soft style martial arts that use Negong training of Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Bakwa, that they use this uh, part of the body here. Okay, let's do some repetitions. Breathe naturally. See, and this would be we can we talk to the rotation power, overturning power. So see, I'm not moving my elbow. My elbow is is uh, staying here, closing and opening like this. Very important. Kind of basic skill, basic practice here. Now to open this up, we'll relax and then make a fist. Okay, and so this is like an opposite power here. Again, this is that overturning, rotating power. This is also descending power. Okay, let me see from the side here going like that. I'm not moving my elbow. This is an opposite movement here. This is the principal movement in the horse form of Xing Yi. Now, we're going to take this grasping power that we just practiced. 
Okay, and we're going to go train the right and left side, but we're going to try to incorporate all four of these elements and understand this is a power. This negong sometimes it can have mean inner training, can also have a, a nuance mean inner energetic strength training or inner inner power training, inner strength training. Okay, and so this is not a muscular strength. It's a Strength unifying the mind, the body, and the breath. Strength also using the kinetic waves, like from the foot to the knee, to the hip, to the intercostal, to the shoulder, to the elbow, to the hand. Okay, these interconnected uh, trains of motion within the body. And in order to develop that, we have to really get down to some very, very simplistic exercises. And that's why a lot of people cannot develop real Nagong power because they don't have the patience to repeat the same thing again and again and again and again. Okay, so let's get in here. Okay, take our hands. If you look at me from the side here, okay, like this. I'm going to take this will be your left, my right. I'm going to squeeze here, making a fist. One, two, three, four, five. Pulling all the way down to below my navel, and I'm coming out to the side here. Okay, this is... We talked about this, this spiraling power. So I'm expressing this spiraling power here with the opposite hand. This is the downward or descending power with the opposite hand. So I'm, this is a, like a fulcrum or like a, a kind of a, a, a leveraging. We have a pulley and two ropes. Okay, and it can create, you can pull up a lot of weight. And we're doing that with our body. So for example, my left, your, your left, my right, is pushing in a line with this opposite side, okay? See that? Now here I'll grasp and I'll come down. Okay, and so here's the rising, the drilling. I, I turn over as I grab and then I, I fall or I descend, okay? And so these are those four powers. You see? And you be aware of your center line here and you see I'm crossing over my center line, coming from this side.